Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, this sermon was going to be called That Should Be Me Talking About Jealousy. And it's also going to be called um, Isolate the Into incident so i don't know what what title i'm gonna end up with or i might just uh slash them and put the two titles down so that's that should be me slash isolate the incident let's pray father i thank you for what you've done I thank you for who you are, and I thank you for showing me just what a wonderful God you are, that you could reveal things and teach us things through circumstances, and that we can understand um, that people are just people, and fallible, and whatever, and just to treat each person and each situation um, on the situation merits. Um, Father, speak through me, speak, speak to me today. And I pray, Lord God, that you will touch every heart, every spirit, every soul today. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hi, guys. Um, first, the first part of this sermon is called Isolate the Incident. The second the second part of the sermon is called That Should Be Me. Um I I went through a personal situation uh yesterday and coming out of that situation I said I always like to look for the lessons I was asking God about this personal situation. And as he revealed the the ins and outs of the situation to, to me, um, I came away with this title just now, Isolate the Incident. Because oftentimes, what what happens in life is when we're young somebody c- could do something to us that really hurt us and um we don't deal with that hurt and then somebody else comes along and does something similar to us and that that thing hurts up hurts us and it and it piles up on the on the previous pain, so pain just keeps piling up and piling up and piling up and piling up. And if we don't deal with um, the individual pains or whatever, that pain could end up on as a landmine when. So you you have somebody that stores up pain for years and years and years of people leaving them, people treating them bad, people, you know, what whatever cheating on them. And then you have them storing up pain and pain for years and years and years. So they have so they finally get into a really good relationship, but that person doesn't know that there are landmines of pain uh, that are there from the person's childhood. Landmines of rejection, landmines of uh, physical, emotional, psychological abuse. They have no idea that all that pain is there. And they they get into the relationship thinking that this person's great, and they are. 
but they have um landmines of unhealed pain and one night um one night let's say you forgot you said you were gonna do the dishes but you forgot and then the person comes home and sees the dish the dishes still in the sink and um and they get in a huge fight with you over dishes and you're like i forgot and they just kind of blow up at you over the dishes and you're like what is going on (laughs) it's just a dish (laughs) um but what you don't realize is it's it's not about a dish the dish was the trigger and god showed me a picture this morning of uh stepping on a landmine everything's okay for years and years and years and years but step on that landmine and everything explodes what what you're getting is unhealed pain unhealed wounds unhealed um unhealed circumstances with that person um not nine times out of ten it's uh, it's um some things are 40 percent you but the rest is is unhealed pain from the past and the the lord said to me about my personal situation he she said no he said isolate the incident he said rachel i hope you learn from this situation to isolate the incident he said deal with every incident on its own merits don't bring things from the past into it um because when you bring things into the when you bring unhealed pain from your past into it that makes a situation worse because you give your trigger response and not the healed response because the triggered response is like you always do this to me you're like every other band i've been with everybody takes advantage of me or whatever and the healed response would be okay i'm i'm sorry i really want the dishes to be like the house to be clean or whatever that's that's the healed response the healed response will deal with the situation at hand and not just and not everybody in that person's life because because that's what we do when we don't heal properly when a wound doesn't heal properly it bleeds until it bleeds on everybody bleeds on every every circumstance so that's why i'm into healing properly um healing over properly and not taking one relationship into another relationship take the lessons but don't take the pain it's important to take the lessons you've learned from one situation to another but don't drag the pain with those lessons and don't make people pay 
for something that they do not that they do not owe. Make the person pay that deserves to pay. Not other people that are just innocent coming along. And and most times that current situation can be solved better if you you were healed enough to see the situation and deal with the situation on the situation terms. And sometimes our our angry responses are our unhealed pain, unhealed wounds that we that we need to deal with. And that's why I am such a big proponent of therapy. Not not just um human therapy, but just coming to God and examining what happened. When a situation happens in my life, whatever, whether it be a situation with um, people, whether it be a situation with God, whether it be a situation with me, I always like to go back to God and say, what happened here? And he, he, he reveals to me what, what happened. And he tells me about the ins and outs of uh, the people's personality, what I did wrong, what I could have done better, and a bit about some light about the people in the circumstances. So that allows me to step back and really make myself better and have a better understanding and what I learned from the situation yesterday was to isolate the incident, deal to deal with the person on that person's merits, to not drag around my past with other people. Cause, cause just because that person that person hurt you in the other relationship doesn't mean that that other person will hurt you. Maybe this was just an innocent misunderstanding or mistake or something with that other person. And check each each person's intentions on their intentions. Don't bring another person's intentions into that conversation. Because many times with many relationships, whether it be marriage or just human relationships, we're, we're talking to one person, but we're really talking to the five people before. Because all those unhealed relationships are still there. And the pain and the residual effects from those unhealed relationships are still there. And we carry them with us until we explode. And we're like, why am I exploding? You're exploding because the pain is unhealed. And it's important to let pain heal first before you get into another situation and to isolate, to deal with each situation and each person on that person's merits. Because that's what happens oftentimes. uh, We kind of carry our past trauma, our past hurt, our past pain around with us. And we don't drop the bags, we just pick up another suitcase. It's like if you were at the airport and you were constantly 
picking up bags, like, and you, and you went to one terminal and picked up one bag, and then you went to another terminal and picked up another bag, and you, and so on and so forth, and you went to another terminal and another terminal, and you just picked up bags without dropping them off. The weight of that pain will would kill you. You would barely be able to walk, barely be able to move. Your your hands would be full. Your back would be aching. And that's what's happening to people emotionally because they're picking up pain without dropping off bags. So, and that's why they don't have any joy or that's why they're triggered so easily because you're you're not dealing with only that issue you're dealing with with the five guys that came before you're dealing with the five guys that hurt her from before you're dealing with uh the five people that hurt her from before um so that's what I learned. Take each incident as it is and deal with the incident on the incident's terms. Um, so that's what I've learned from that. And sw- switching over now to um, the uh, initial sermon title called That Should Be Me. Um, I was I was instructed by the Lord to listen to some old school Justin Bieber. Um, there's a song that he did years and years ago, way back when he first came out, uh, that said, um, called that should be me and and the lord said i want you to talk about jealousy and i said what lord i'm not a jealous person uh why do you want me to talk about jealousy he said there's somebody out here that needs to hear about it and i thought back of um and I'm like, how do I even start? I'm not a jealous person. I'm happy for people. And he's like, really think back. And as I thought back about it, I I said, I'm not a jealous person. But there are there are twinges of not right feelings when when I see someone that you know to. To give an example, um, when I see someone got married that was single, and I'm like, and most of me is happy for them, but there's that little part of me that says, why not me? And and what I what I'm learning is that sometimes uh, jealousy could be overt, like totally in your face, but sometimes it can be covert, totally um, hidden. And when it when it's hidden, it can fester and cause you to be totally miserable. And, uh, and the Lord wants me to remind you, he has stuff there's no need to be jealous of other person or to covet what another person has because he has stuff on your road that is designed for you. And he has a, a, a person, in my case, designed specifically for me. He has people that will come into my life specifically for me. And another thing is, um, when I see someone once Instagram and on Facebook, 
I don't know what's behind that picture. They could be smiling in that picture and a second later be tearing each other apart. I don't know. So don't want what somebody has because you don't know what's inside of that. Just celebrate what you have because you never know what God has in store for you. And he has the right thing in store for you specifically. He has a life specifically tailored for you. If you follow the prompts and listen to his voice where he is concerned, he has all kinds of good things waiting for you. All jealousy does is make you want something that is not for you yet. It's make you desire something that the Lord doesn't want for you. He wants the best for you. And your best is not that other person's best. Your best is specifically designed for you. So celebrate that person instead of getting jealous because who knows what that um what God has in store for you. It's it's the right thing for you. And it's the right thing that he's got and it's the right thing that he wants for you. Because I think sometimes we see um things and want them but we do Number one, like I said before, we don't know what's inside that picture. And we don't know what that, how many nights that person cried. We don't know the loneliness that hit that person. We don't know the feelings that were, that was going on with that person before they got their partner. We, we have no idea. We don't, we want what they've got, but we don't know what they did to get it. And nine times out of ten, if we did, we wouldn't want it anymore anyway. Because what they did to get it, we can't do it or we're unwilling to do. So understand that that green monster is not healthy. That green monster is the spirit designed to keep you in want, designed to keep you in lack. The Lord wants you to experience and explore his fullness. And you cannot explore his his fullness and what he wants for you just with the spirit of jealousy. The spirit of jealousy is from hell, and it needs to go back to hell. Now, you can work for um, what you desire with the Lord's help, but understand, even if you don't get it, and that other person uh, does, the Lord has a more more excellent plan for you than you could ever have for yourself. The Lord's ways are so excellent and his ways are so past finding out. We see through glass darkly, but the Lord has so much for us and our future is so bright. But if we spend time in jealousy and comparison, that will hit. It's the greatest hindrance to what God has for us to receive it. Because if we spend all our time looking at what people have or what people have um, uh, gotten and what or what people are doing. We're not focused on what God has for us. We're so busy with what God has for them. We're missing what God has for us now. 
I don't know about you, but I want everything God has for me and nothing God has for another person. Because he's made me unique. He's loved me uniquely. He has a unique plan and purpose for me. In the name of Jesus, thank you for my uniqueness. Thank you for making me just a unique person that you've loved and that you adored. And the thing about God, he is so unique and he's so into celebrating differences. And I think that's what's wrong with our world. We all want, um, we all want things to be um, the same. Like we're afraid to do something different. We're afraid to step out because, like, doing things the same is what works. But I think the Lord wants us to step out and embrace our differences not to do things the same as that person but to understand that he's made us uh uniquely beautiful uniquely talented uniquely gifted for what he's made us for and he's he's given us unique traits and if we're so busy uh, marred in pain and past hurt and unhealed pain and and if we're so busy marred in jealousy and comparison we'll miss the wonderful things that God has p- planned for us and he says get ready I've got some wonderful things But that unhealed pain and that jealous spirit and that 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 landmine spirit and that comparison um, that comparison thing that you've got there are keeping you from experiencing my fullness because if if people are afraid um, of your triggers and they're afraid of you and to walk and they walk on eggshells around you because they're afraid of of the, the landmines in your life. They're afraid of stepping on something unhealed and it exploding. You'll never get to know the greatness of not only you, but of the people behind, um, of the people in your life. They they won't be themselves around you because they'll be too afraid of hurting you and too afraid of saying something wrong or too afraid of saying something that hurts you and, or something to um, make you upset. And you won't be getting their fullness, and they won't be getting your fullness. So maybe it's not the fact that you don't have friends. Maybe it's the fact that you're not letting people see your fullness, or they're too afraid to. Um, bring their full selves to you because they're afraid that you'll that they'll say something to offend you. And uh, newsbreak, when you're dealing with a person, they will say something to offend you eventually. And it's how you deal with it. Deal with any person for any length of time and they will say something to offend you they will say something to make you feel some kind of way but it's how you respond do you respond 
with the situation on situations terms or do you respond with five other people in the room although it's only the two of you in the room so i've heard in relationships when people say um come with your 100 100 uh come with your full self and what i'm starting to realize is why many people don't come with their full selves is A, they don't know who that is, and B, they're, they're um, afraid, to, afraid to come with their full selves because um, they don't know if you'll accept their full selves. So they come with the, the pretty parts of them and you get into relationship with them, and then you find that, oh my God, here is the unhealed part of the person. So my endeavor these next four years and the latter part of my life is to make people um, feel safe enough to come with their full selves to come with their baggage, to be themselves around um, me, to express themselves the way they do around me, to just let them be themselves. And I endeavor from now on to treat every situation as an isolated incident and to not bring my past hurts uh, to a situation and to deal with that situation on that situation's terms. Life is totally a learning experience if you let it be and it's just a a wonderful uh, learning experience and the greatest teacher. Challenges are the greatest teachers if we just let them be and if we open up to them being the greatest teachers it's awesome to even think about that and to and to just um embrace that life is so awesome so i will see you soon take care bye guys That should be me holding your hand. That should be me making you laugh. That should be me. This is so sad. That should be me. That should be me. That should be me feeling your kiss. That should be me buying you gifts. This is so. I can't go out and that should be me. Forgive me, Bieber fans, if I screwed up the words. Bye, guys. See you later.